All right, Shalom, Shalom. So, Brother Ozma Walsh once again with another lesson. First and foremost, we're going to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakaha Kodash. It's all praise to the Heavenly Father and the Son's name, who the world in the call of Jesus Christ, in the real name, Yahweh Shah. I just want to say Shalom to all the sincere hearted Akiwa Aqua and give double honor to my elders who taught me the truth. All right, so today, right, as the theme always is, is centered around prophecy, right? Because we are, and I believe the last video I put up on this channel was basically <clears throat> in response to a comment I had heard <coughs> um, a fellow, uh, you know, he had made, um, you know, and it's basically saying that, you know, we have a long time here. Well, you know, once again, if you if you can't see that we are here, we're at, that we're at, we're at the end, so like if we're at the end of this this road, if you will, you know, Esau Edom's kingdom, right? If you can't see that, well, that's 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 tough luck on you, man. You know, because um, you know these signs, it's just so much happening, man, that you can't even keep up. You know, like there's there's constantly something to uh, to warn the flock about, man. Uh, there's just a lot of things going on, um, and Howard Shah said that he was going to throw these flurries of prophecies in our faces in the end times, man. You know, so here we are. But as a matter of fact, let's get a couple of scriptures that we'll jump into this lesson. Uh, this lesson is going to be basically touching up to uh, some current events that's going around. This is uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 19. He says, repent ye therefore, right? And once again, what does repent mean? It means to turn, right? Metanayo says to change one mind, to change one's mind. All right. So a part of you repenting, you're changing your mind. You're, you're putting on the new man, right? That's made after the image uh, of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, particularly Yahweh Shah. You're putting on that mindset, right? He says, repent ye therefore and be converted, right? And you go into that word convert, it means to basically translate over into the truth, right? So you come into the truth. He says that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come. And what's the times of refreshing? This is Yahweh uh, uh great reset, if you will. Because we're going to touch into uh, today about the elites, you know, the so-called elites. They're not the real elites, man. You know, those are base men. But the so-called elites plan to have a global reset, right? But no, this global reset is going to come from Yahweh Shah. That's the times of refreshing, right? And it's going to be started... <laughs> Whenever, you know, he puts it upon those king's minds to, to hit that uh, ICBM missile button. That's when everything is going to be refreshed, man. Right? He says, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And what's the presence of the Lord going to be like? All right? Because you want your sins blotted out, right, when the times of refreshing come. Because if the times of refreshing come, well, when they come and your sins aren't blotted out, <laughs> you're going to be blotted out, man. You're going to be blotted out, all right? This is Psalm 66, and I'm going to start at verse 15. He says, for behold, Yahweh will come with fire. See, that? that's the presence. That's that fire uh, coming from the presence of the Lord. That's going to be the refreshing uh, mechanism, right, in, in order to, you know, clean up, you know, this planet, all right? And he says, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots. And his chariots are the so-called UFOs. They're IFOs to us. They're identified flying objects. We know what they are, according to the Holy Scriptures. He says, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger and with fury. See that? To render his anger with fury. And why is the Lord furious? Because the pride of man. Because the pride of man and what they've done unto his chosen people. And he's also mad at two-thirds of his own people because of the, the type of lawlessness that's going on around here, man. Right? And he says, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by sword and, uh, Salaki, for by fire and by his sword, right? And we're going to touch into that sword today, man, right? If, you, if you've been tapped in or if you watch, you know, um, you know, some other brothers, I'm, you know, brothers that actually touch into prophecies, you should know what the Lord's sword is by now. You should know. It's Esau Edom. That's the that's his birthright, right? 
but eventually the Lord is going to take Esau Edom out by his by his own uh, birthright, if you will, by his by the sword. Right? He says, "For by fire and by his sword will Yahweh plead with all flesh." All right, and that word "plead" doesn't mean that he's going to you know just beg you to get right. No, that word "plead" goes into judgment. Right? Judgment. As a matter of fact, plead. Let's see. Yep, shapat. It means to judge, to govern, vindicate. And once he vindicating, vindicating, uh, you know, punishment. All right. I like line D. It says, at theophonic, at advent for final judgment. Theophonic advent for final judgment. All right. This is literally like the last scene of the movie. All right. And it's filled with uh, judgment, man. Right, so let's get this real quick in the book of Deuteronomy. Let's start at verse uh, no, let's start at verse 25. And he says, To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. What does that word recompense mean? It means payback, re means again, and compense means to pay. Right it means to pay back. He says their foot shall slide in due time. And the Lord is looking at Esau Edom, right? And the way how he's moving right now <laughs> and he's moving sloppy, right? This is why he's just basically, um, basically he already told you his game plan, right? He, he, we know that there's gonna be, you know, uh, future lockdowns now, right? We know, and this is also, you know, the Lord showing his mercy. Right. The Lord is showing us mercy by allowing those who can see it that this man's foot has slidden. Right. Right. So this man, he already told us it's going to be new lockdowns. He's crashing the economy. Right. The the uh, the Dow just hit, you know, it's all time low, man. Right. Oh, let's see. Another thing. Uh, digital currency. You know that <laughs> that's the new that's about to be the new uh, new norm for currency. Uh, what else you got? Um, you got a scarcity of food, right? Because the the the, uh, the government has been buying out all these farmers, you know, and basically been paying uh, paying them, you know, for them to um, to destroy their crops, right? But that's this man moving in desperate attempts, right? But with that, his foot is sliding. He says, "Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand." And the things that shall be salaki and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Yeah, this is why we also hasten that day. So things are happening very quick. And this is why we're having a flurry of prophecies to just come before our faces, man. Right? Every single day when you wake up, you get this alert, you get that alert, right? And it's gonna be even more as we get to the end of this thing. Verse 36, he says, For Yahweh shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants. And the Lord has been judging us, man. Why? First and foremost, because we deserve it, because we've been going off as hell, right? Two-thirds is still going off as hell, right? And he's also, uh, for the one-third, he's going to judge our cause, man. He's going to basically plead our cause, all right? He's going to make sure that the elect is, uh, is spotless. And with that, he's judging, you know, the hopeful elect right now, all right? He's chastening those that he loves. So when judgment day does come, as a matter of fact, let me grab that. Let's say First Corinthians eleven. It's First Corinthians eleven. Bear with me real quick. Somewhere over here. And let me just look at it in my Bible. <clears throat> I know exactly where it is. Yeah, first Corinthians 11 and 32. And he says, But when we are judged, see that when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. All right. And the Lord, He doesn't judge everybody um, you know, at the same time, right? Because Esau Edom, he has not gotten his judgment yet. But Israel, we have been getting our judgment. Why is that? 
But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. He says that we should not be condemned with the world. That's why. That's why. This is why the Lord is judging us right now. So we don't get caught up in the death of an infidel, man. So we don't have to die the death of an infidel. All right. Because these things were created, you know, these, these uh, inventions and weapons of war and all these things, these were created for the evil, not the upright. And you had to remember that. So, you know, and this is just a side note, whatever brothers or sisters may be going through right now, right? Take that, you know, with a smile on your face, knowing that this is Yahweh while Yahweh Shah, right? Judging you in righteousness, right? And the hopes that he forges, uh, he forges that, that fine piece of gold in the uh, fiery furnace of affliction, right? So when that day does come, when he judged the whole world, you're found not wanting, man. You're found as a, as a pure sacrifice unto him, and he will receive you up, right? Verse 36 says, For Yahweh shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he see it that their power is gone. See that? When he see it that their power is gone, and there is, uh, so like it, and there is none shut up or left. Yeah, when our power is gone, because Esau is about to move so, so cruel, right, to the point to where, you know, we're going to have to have supernatural power. We're going to have to have a supernatural intervention in order to help us out, man. All right. And even David, you know, uh, when you read Psalms 80, so like it, let's get that. Psalms 18. Let me just look it up real quick. Yep. Psalms 18, verse 17, he says, he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Yeah, we understand that Esau eat him. Now, of course, biologically, right, on the individual aspect, this man is not stronger than us, right? So-called, you know, Black, Hispanic, Native American man can, can whoop, you know, uh, uh, any Edomite's ass any day straight up out his sleep, man. Right. But the Lord has basically allowed this base man to be over us so it could be a reproach and so it could be a, a, a learning lesson for us. Right. But in the process of that, the Lord has allowed this man to basically uh, multiply and to be built up in his military might. So this man is he's our strong enemy. Right. And they're too strong for us, man. Right. You can't. I don't care if you get, you know, uh, uh, a million Negroes and they all got AKs. You know, they all got Uzis or whatnot, and they try to overcome this man. It still won't work. Why? Because you don't have, we don't have a military. This man can drop an ICBM missile, or he can drop any type of uh, uh, weapon of destruction and just get a helicopter and just, you know, start getting you from an aerial point, and you're finished, man. <laughs> you're finished. This man, he's, he far exceeds us with the military might. Why? Because we're still in the land of our captivities. So we're going to have to have divine intervention. Right. And this is why scriptures always tell you time and time again to place your trust in your house and you shall never fare the worse. Right. Because we're moving in that time to where Jake's natural reaction is to move on a carnal level. Jake is going to try to meet the most carnal man with carnality and that won't work. Our forefather, Jacob, well, Abraham and Isaac, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob left us a, a legacy of moving in the spirit. Right when when Jacob fought, he wasn't fighting flesh and blood. He was fighting an angel, man. So our people, we, we you, you should be you should be programmed to be used to uh, spiritually fighting right now, right? And we understand that that spiritual fight manifests itself out openly in the carnal realm, right? In the in the fleshly realm. Well, this is what one reason why this man is about to come down full force on us because. A part of the tribes taking our, our nationality back, right? Instead of calling ourselves Black, Hispanic, and Native American, now we remember who we are, that we're Israelites. And now we're fighting for that inheritance once again, right? Brothers out there teaching on the street corners, right? You're doing your lessons during the week, right? And our people are, are repenting. This is us fighting in the spirit. And Esau Edom sees this, this awakening happening. And now he's, he's about to try to chop this down, man, right? But that's when our power, right, is going to intervene on our behalf. Right. 
So nonetheless, let's get into some of these current events. It says July's full moon, uh, buck moon, so like a July full buck moon rises this week and it may appear red in the night sky. See that? It says the next full, the next full moon is fast approaching, rising bright in the night sky on Friday, July 23rd. And it may appear a reddish orange hue, not because of an eclipse, but because of the rampant wildfire spreading across the Western U.S. And Yahweh, while Yahweh Shah said that, that he will, uh, you know, judge this place with fire. All right, so the Lord's are kind of giving, you know, these Babylonians a, a taste of what their final demise would be. All right, it says enormous wildfires are burning across several Western states, but winds are carrying the smoke much further, drifting across New York and the tri-state area and creating colorful sunrises and moon rises across the region. All right, it says the ongoing haze means this full moon, this month's full moon could have that same orange glow. And this is a picture of what it'll look like. And the reason why the Lord is having this set up like this is because to basically further warn his flock, right? Those who have eyes to see, because everyone is gonna see, right? This red moon, this blood moon, right? But not everybody's gonna see it, right? If you see what I'm saying, right? Because he has hid certain things from individuals' eyes. This is why he put the sun, moon, the stars, and the sky. This is Genesis chapter 1, verse 16. No, it's like verse, uh, verse 14. He says, and Yahweh said, it's like it. And the power said, right, because at this time, you know, this is the Elohim speaking, you know, Yahweh Shah and the holy angels, right? After they were, you know, well, while they were creating planet Earth and everything else, he says, and the power said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, right? To divide the day from the night and let them be. And what's the lights in the, in the heavens? The sun, the moon, and the stars. And he says, and let them be for signs. See that? Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Right. So this moon that we're looking at, Right, this, this this blood moon, this is set up as a sign to let you know what? <laughs> to let you know that war. It's like, let me get the scripture. To let you know that war and uh and, and massive bloodshed is on its way. Right? It says um, this is Joel 2 and 1. He says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. All right, and this is why the Lord has set up right his prophets once again. Right to blow the trumpet, and what's that trumpet? Your voice, Isaiah 58 and 1. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people the transgressions. All right, once again, because you want your sins blotted out before that day comes. He says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahweh cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Now let's skip down here to verse. Uh, verse where is it at yep verse 31 i'm gonna start at verse 30 he says and this is the context it says the day of the lord he says and i will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth all right and the lord is showing wonders all right in the heavens right we're looking at a wonder that's about to occur and we just had a, a blood moon i remember when i was at work working that late night shift maybe about um probably it's been about a month ago now, um, like around 3 a.m., I saw a huge blood red moon, all right? So the Lord has been showing these different signs and these wonders, all right? Why? So, so it can basically register in the mind of Jake, all right? My power that created me, my power that created that, that, that image, right? To be, well, that, that moon to basically allow me to know and to show me, right, that <laughs> all hell is about to break loose. He says, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. And the Lord is showing a lot of wonders in the earth, man. All right. And, you know, it's and wickedness is a part of that, that wonder, right? Because you're wondering how in the hell is this wickedness basically, <laughs> it's just like it really is. This, this world has always been wicked, especially under the watch of Esau Edom, 
but it literally seemed like overnight it just took a plight for the worst like just <laughs> you know all of a sudden he says and blood and fire and pillars of smoke right and and this especially uh babylon they're getting all of that man it's a lot of blood being shed right and also you were about to get that that next blood moon right in july he says and fire right the pretty much you know the west you know babylon you know it's just massive amounts of fire and he said and pillars of smoke yeah because it's coming from the fire verse 31 the sun shall be turned into darkness right and that happens a lot right uh after these um these or during these these um uh, forest fires right because it blocks out the sun right and he said, uh, and the moon into blood, see that? The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood, right? Before the great and terrible day of Yahweh uh, come. Before the great and terrible day of the, uh, of the Lord come. See that? And that's what we're looking at right here. So the Lord has set this up as a sign, right? To let us know that Yahweh, uh, that Yahweh Shah is about to come, man. And we got how his entrance will be. It's going to be with fire. <laughs> it's going to be with sword. It's going to be with pestilence, plagues, right? And this is why, you know, no matter how, how nice and sweet the message may sound, right? It's, it's shra enshrouded over, uh, you know, a, a message of, uh, or it has an overtone of warning you, man, right? So let's go over here. To this next article and it says mitch mcconnell urges americans to get vaccinated us uh, i don't want to say that word because they're going to take it down mitch mcconnell urges americans to get jabbed up against COVID or risk shutdowns again all right <laughs> so basically get ready for these next uh these next batches of shutdown well this next shutdown man and this next shutdown will be the real deal according to bill gates himself all right, Bill Gates has stated um, even before the first shutdown that there will be a second shutdown and the second shutdown will get your attention. All right, so this is already something that the elites have formulated. All right, these these fat, wealthy, rich men that sitting, you know, high and lofty, you know, they're basically uh, they're basically forging your future for you. All right, but behind the scenes that they don't know is your how a shot is pulling the strings on their minds. Right to make them do this, right? Because they're doing everything as the scripture said that they would be doing, right? And brothers and sisters are getting dreams, right? Visions every day, right? I myself had a uh, had a dream just last week about <laughs> literally a, a rain of ICBM missiles coming down up on this place. So, hey man, we here. Because as a matter of fact, let's go back to Joel. Joel said that that would happen. This is Joel chapter two. And uh, 28, he says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. See that? And this is in that same chapter we just got done reading about the signs, right? The signs of the times before Yahweh, uh, before Yahweh shall comes, right? You know, and I'm not the only one that's getting these dreams and these visions. Right, plenty of brothers and sisters are. Why? Because this is the Lord and His mercy, you know, to show us that hey, it's time to get the hell up out of here, and you better get your house in order, man. All right. So it says Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell implored unvaccinated, uh, dang, unjabbed Americans Tuesday to take the uh, C19 jab, issuing a stark and grave warning of a repeat of last year's rising caseloads and uh, shutdowns if people refuse to protect themselves from the corona, uh, from the crown. And as a matter of fact, yeah, we'll, uh, let's go over here to this, this little page I have found. And this page is going into, um, this is the, uh, the title, it says, From Lockdowns to the Great Reset. See that? And remember, let's see, let's, let's go over here, let's see when this Great Reset started. Mm 
not what it went. All right. Yep. It's the Great Reset. The Great Reset is the name of the 50th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum held in June 2020. All right. So they had this meeting in June 2020, all the world's so-called elite, you know, and this is some, some this is not something that they're trying to hide, right? They've been, you know, they don't mind telling these things, right? Because first and foremost, you don't have any power to stop them, right? <laughs> so they um yeah they had this meeting in 2020 so basically this uh this information that i found is kind of going into it right a little more and it says the 2020 lockdowns possibly offer a preview of how this system works right it says the lockdown worked as if it had been orchestrated and perhaps it was right because it's, it's no it shouldn't surprise you man that the elites they're the ones who's this is why they're pushing so hard for a lot of that. No matter how many people get jabbed up, right? Even if they meet their quota, guess what? They're still going to lock the stain down because it's a part of their plan. This is why they're they're crashing the economy, man, on purpose, right? And that happens by the lockdowns. Why? So that that will allow them to usher in their their new world currency. Everything is going to be new according to them. They're going to have a new currency, right? <laughs> they're going to have a new system of doing things, right? It's, 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 total, it's going to be total uh, totalitarianism, right? And he says, as if following a single command, the leaders of big and small nations of different stages of economic development implemented almost identical measures. Not only did many governments act in unison, they also applied these measures with little regard for the horrific consequences of a global lockdown. Yeah, because you had those smaller countries like... Uh, you know, like uh, Iran, you know, uh, those little small, uh, you know, countries in Africa, you know, they got on board too. Why? Because when Esau Edom, when the big dog talks, everybody got to follow what he does, man. Also proven that this man is Esau because the Bible says that Esau is the end of the world, All right? He's the one that's calling the shots and making all these nations, even the nations that don't like him, get down with his program. It says months, months of economic steel stand have destroyed the economic basis of millions of families. Together with the social distancing, the lockdown has produced a mass of people unable to care for themselves. Uh, first, governments destroyed their livelihood. Then the politicians showed up as a savior. Yeah, that's what they want. They want to give you the problem, and then they're going to give you the solution. Wow, so it could look like that there. They're basically... <laughs> Pimping your ass out, right? They 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 <laughs> they hand you over into a man that, that they know is gonna whoop your ass, right? Do all these things, and then they're gonna bring you back home and stitch you up as if everything's okay. And then you're gonna put your trust back into them. All right. This government is known to be the biggest exploiter of all time. All right, to be the biggest merchandiser of all time. Don't believe me? Well. <laughs> If you're, so, if you're a so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American, the reason why you're over here is because of that, right? And they want to be, they want to show the masses that they are gods, man. But they're not gods, according to the Holy Scriptures. Let's grab that real quick, right? But a lot of our people are so damn simple-minded go down into Egypt, right? As the Lord said that they would do. Let's see if this is it. Mm-hmm. Yep, this is, uh, I'm sorry, verse 30, chapter 31, verse 1. He says, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. All right, and why is this place also known as Egypt? Because Egypt in the ancient world was known as a place of bondage for us, right? And this place is known as spiritual Egypt in scriptures, all right? He says, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. And a lot of our people are depending upon this, this man's system for help. This is why they don't mind conforming unto the image of the beast, right? And they don't mind conforming and getting jabbed up, all right? He says, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many. Yeah, our people, they're also trusting in this military and this man's military might because he <laughs> he has many fighter jets. He has many, you know, helicopters and all these different things to basically help them have that false uh, uh, sense of security. 
He says, and a horseman, because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek Yahweh. All right, and that's our people, man. They, they look unto the so-called white man, right? Way before, right? They look unto Yahweh Bashmah Shah. He says, yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words. All right, <laughs> don't forget that the Lord, <laughs> he is wise. He's the one who gives wisdom. And he's also going to be the one that's going to bring this evil. And he's not going to call back his words. And he's already uttered his words. Uh, he already uttered his words. Right? His, and his words are, entain, are contained in these prophecies. He says, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. He says, now the Egyptians are men and not God. See that? Let's go back to the article. The Egyptians are men and not God. It says, first governments destroyed their livelihood. Then the politicians politicians uh, showed up as the savior. All right. <laughs> they weren't the ones who created all this, man. They didn't create these scenarios. All right. The Lord is the one who put all this stuff inside their minds. They're not the most high. They're not the saviors, man. Yahweh Shah is the savior. He says, it says the demand for social uh, uh, assistance is no longer limited to specific groups, but has become a need of the masses. Once war was the health of the state, now it's fear of disease. What lies ahead is not the apparent coziness of a benevolent, comprehensive welfare state with a guaranteed minimum income and health care and education for all. All right, so basically, <laughs> it's not... You know, after this great reset, it's, it's not going to be cozy. It says this, the lockdown and its uh, consequences have brought a foretaste. See that? This is all a foretaste of what is to come. It says a permanent state of fear, strict behavior control, massive job, uh, loss of jobs, and growing dependence on the state. See that? Growing depends upon this government, man. And this is why they're grooming the masses you know, to basically start cultivating this mindset to really depend upon them. This is why they're taking away everything. This is why censorship is at an all-time high. All right, this is why I can't say certain words when I'm doing my videos now because this is uh, so-called uh, behavioral control, man. All right, but the Lord is going to be the one that's going to set everything back in order according to the act like that, that scripture that we got in Acts chapter 3, verse 18, right, until the times of refreshing comes. Um, so yeah, let's get a couple more scriptures that we'll end it out. Let's go to Job chapter five. <clears throat> he says, uh, verse 11, he says to set up, to set up on high those that be low, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. And that's what the Lord is about to do, uh, for the elect of the, um, nation of Israel. He's going to set up, um, he's going to set us up on high. Because right now we're at a low state. So he's going to refresh everything. All right. Verse 12, he says, he disappointeth the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. And that's what he's going to do, right, in this man's feeble attempt to create a new world order. All right. He's going to disappoint the devices of the crafty. All right. All these laws and legislations and, you know, uh, FEMA camps and all that stuff getting set up. He's going to disappoint right? Those devices, man, right? Because this man truly thinks that he's about to, you know, have full sway and full control over the planet Earth, over the whole planet. No, but the Lord's going to disappoint your device and he's going to cause your hands not to perform the enterprise, All right? Uh, as a matter of fact, let's keep reading. Verse 13, he says, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness right? because Esau Edom's, you know, his own wisdom has perverted him. When you read Isaiah chapter 47, it talks about how uh, the daughter of Babylon or the virgin daughter of Babylon, uh, she became perverted in her own uh, wisdom. He says, and the counsel of the froward is carried hand long, headlong. It says they meet with darkness in the daytime. See that? So <laughs> these counsels that they hold, you know, like that, uh, like that great reset, you know, that council was actually held at daytime, man, but they, they meet with darkness, meaning that they meet with with evil intentions. He says, and grope in the noonday as in the night. 
But, see that? Verse 15. But, so there's rules to this. There's exceptions to this rule, man. All right? <laughs> he says, but he saveth the poor from the sword. And who's that sword? Esau, Edom. Right? So although, right, these calamities will happen, it's not going to happen to everybody, man. Now, we understand that we're all going to be in this thing, right? But once again, like scripture says, he knoweth how to deliver the righteous. He knows how to deliver the righteous. This is what he's always done. So I write chapter two says that who has ever called upon him, right? And he has not heard them. He has not saved them. All right. So he says, but he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth. See that from their mouth. And what's Esau Edom's mouth, right? His legislation, his laws. This is how he speaks. He says, and from the hand of the mighty. It says, so the poor hath hope and iniquity stoppeth her mouth. And this is why Yahweh Shah says, in Matthew chapter 5, blessed are the poor. As a matter of fact, let's get that. Because we're in the best case scenario. If you're so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American. You're in the best case scenario right now. Right? Because when he's come back, he's exalting the low and bringing down the high and mighty. So if you're already high and mighty, if you already, you know, are, are the lineage, if you're of the lineage of Esau, Edom, Right, you're in your kingdom. Well, when he comes back, <laughs> he sets everything back in its proper order. When he flips things around, right, that means your ass is going down. All right, but once again, with us being on the bottom, hey, we got we're looking forward to the times of refreshing because we know that's only up from here, man. This Matthew 5 and 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. See that? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we're looking forward to, man, is the kingdom of heaven. All right, so uh, see uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end it on out and get one more scripture. It's Matthew four. It's a lucky Matthew three. I want Matthew three and verse one. I'm gonna start at verse. Uh, yeah, start at verse one. He says, "In those days came uh, John the Baptist, all right, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand.' All right." And so once again, that's the that's the overtone of this message is repentance because the kingdom is at hand, man. We see all the signs popping off. We see these wars and rumors of wars popping off, man. You know, before I got on, brother has sent me, you know, a message about, you know, this earthquake that had hit. Um, where is that at? Let me see real quick. It was a 7.0 earthquake hit the coast of Panama, <laughs> you know? So, hey, man, and oh, look, also Russia tests hypersonic missile in the Arctic, right, to U.S. alarm. See that? And then Bill Gates and George Soros, uh, they bought out the U.K. Co uh, jab test company, Melogic. See that? So, yeah, man, hey, everything's right on, right on time, right on schedule, right? So... You know, this is why it's important for you to know the times. Let me get that real quick. First Thessalonians 5 and 1. And he says, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. All right. And you should know by now, man. All right. <laughs> that Yahweh Shah, he can come at any moment, man. All right. Now we understand that there's a couple more prophecies that got to you know, be implemented, right? Such as, uh, you know, full on Jacob's trouble. And we got to, you know, basically have that hour of temptation tried upon, tried upon us and the whole world. And then, you know, the MOTB, right? At Revelation 13, 16, right? You brothers and sisters, y'all know what I'm trying to say because I can't say certain words, you know, on YouTube or else they'll flag it and, you know, take my channel down. But, but yeah, man, that's all the part of knowing the signs, all right? So, with that, I hope you was edified, you know, and uh, Lord willing, I'll see you all tomorrow, you know, give you another update. Till next time, Mawafla Baba, Shalawan.